Keith King had trained his whole life to reach the Romulan Space Academy, and now that he was finally here, he was determined not to be the worthless human punching bag the arrogant aliens expected. At 22, Keith was the first human ever admitted to the prestigious academy on planet Romulus Prime, but that didn't mean the Romulans wanted him here. In a class of 50 cadets, each boasting superior strength and intellect, Keith consistently ranked dead last in every subject. Advanced quantum mechanics, zero-G combat, Keith failed it all. Even worse than the bruises and broken bones from training were the insults. Stupid pink skin. Your puny ape brain is centuries behind us superior Romulans, Keith's hulking blue rival Zorak spat as he effortlessly slammed the human into the mat for the hundredth time. Keith's massive seven-foot commandant Zephyr never missed a chance to declare that he fully expected the lone human to wash out. I'll be shocked if he lasts the semester, Zephyr announced gleefully. Humans are far too dumb and weak to make it here. Keith's only friend was his roommate Tarok, a rare Romulan who actually respected his determination. I know you can take a hit, but let's be real. You'll never beat a Romulan, Tarek said sympathetically as he helped Keith limp back from another disastrous combat session. I admire your spirit, but you're just outmatched. With final exams approaching, the specter of failing hung over Keith. He'd be damned if he let these blue bastards kick him out now. No, the mighty Romulan Empire was about to learn that underestimating humanity was a huge mistake. Keith would show them all what a human was truly capable of, even if it killed him. He just had to figure out how to unleash his full potential before time ran out. With final exams looming, Keith spent hours poring over dusty tomes in the Academy Library, desperate for any edge. As he scanned the spines of ancient texts, a strange metallic orb caught his eye on a forgotten shelf. Keith pulled it down and felt it hum at his touch. The orb glowed blue and projected a hologram of dense alien text. Keith squinted at the archaic Romulan glyphs, straining his limited knowledge of the language. He made out mentions of a legendary warrior named Takar, who had abilities beyond any Romulan. The hologram also showed Takar performing an intense training regimen of meditation poses, grueling exercises, and mental trials. Figuring he had nothing to lose, Keith began following Takar's routine in secret. For weeks he saw no change as he struggled through the strange practices each night, but gradually, almost imperceptibly at first, Keith started to feel different. His mind calculated equations with newfound ease. His body moved with increasing grace and power. As the exams arrived, jaws dropped across the academy. In the combat ring, Keith fought Zorak to a standstill, matching the Romulan's vaunted strength and speed. Tarok cheered from the sidelines in disbelief. On the written tests, Keith achieved flawless scores, his answers elegantly surpassing even top Romulan intellects. Zephyr scowled as he read through Keith's results. The Commandant ordered his staff to dig deep into the human's recent activities, convinced he must have cheated somehow. Keith paid the suspicions no mind, continuing to push his body and mind to new extremes each night. He could feel himself changing, accessing untapped human potential. The real challenges were still to come. Keith's sudden victory in the exams shook the academy. Zephyr fumed silently as he reviewed security footage of Keith's late-night library visits and intense solo training sessions. He stormed into Keith's dorm room unannounced. I have been keeping secrets, human, Zephyr growled. No one improves that fast. Explain yourself. Keith sighed and revealed the ancient orb. He explained how he had deciphered the text and followed Takar's ancient training. Zephyr scoffed. Nonsense. Takar is a myth. You clearly cheated and I'll prove it. He whirled around, his voice booming over the intercom. Attention all cadets and instructors. Assemble in the main arena immediately for a duel between myself and the human. We'll see if his skills are real or fabricated. Minutes later, Keith found himself facing off against Zephyr in the center of the crowded arena, Romulan energy blades humming in their hands. Zorak and the other cadets watched raptly from the stands. At first, Zephyr's centuries of experience gave him the advantage. His blade moved in a whirlwind as he drove Keith back, 
but Keith remained calm, allowing his heightened senses and reflexes to guide him. He began to match Zephyr's speed, their blades colliding in showers of sparks. Zephyr roared with frustration as he failed to penetrate Keith's defences. The human was a blur of motion, moving faster than any Romulan he had ever seen. In desperation, Zephyr summoned his psionic powers, a technique only the strongest Romulans could employ. Invisible energy slammed into Keith, trying to overpower his mind, but Keith's mental discipline held firm. With a cry of exertion, he unleashed a psionic blast of his own. The shockwave sent Zephyr flying. He crashed to the ground in a clatter of armor. His blade skittered away as he struggled to rise. Keith stood over him, the point of his sword at Zephyr's throat. Yield, Keith demanded, his voice carrying across the suddenly silent arena. Zephyr stared up at him in disbelief. Then he lowered his eyes. I yield. The crowd erupted. Zorak gaped openly as Tarok cheered. As medics rushed to tend to Zephyr, Keith glimpsed a shadowy figure wearing a hood slipping out of the arena. The mysterious Romulan paused, locking eyes with Keith for a split second before vanishing from view. Keith frowned. Something told him this was far from over. Shaking off his unease, he deactivated his blade and walked over to help Zephyr to his feet. He had won this battle. But he knew many more trials awaited him. In the days following Keith's shocking victory over Zephyr, whispers followed him through the academy halls. Zorak, his former tormentor, now nodded to him respectfully as they passed. Instructors who had once derided Keith's every effort now praised his technique. Even Zephyr, through gritted teeth, acknowledged Keith's skill. But Keith's thoughts were consumed by the mysterious figure from the arena. Who was the hooded Romulan? What did he know about Takar? We need to find out more, Keith said to Tarok as they pored over ancient tomes in the library. There must be some record of Takar's life. Four days they searched, scouring dusty archives and forgotten databases. Finally, Tarok uncovered a fragmentary text that spoke of a hidden temple deep in the wilderness, said to be Takar's final resting place. It's our only lead, Keith said. We have to go. The journey was arduous, through jagged mountains and dense jungle. Strange beasts stalked them in the shadows, but Keith and Tarok pressed on, driven by the need for answers. At last they stood before the temple, an ancient structure of weathered stone. As they approached, a figure emerged from the entrance. It was the hooded Romulan from the arena. Welcome, Keith King, the Romulan said, lowering his hood. I am Tazan, leader of the Guardians of Takar. We have been expecting you. Inside the temple, Tazan led them to a chamber lit by glowing crystals. Other hooded Romulans lined the walls, watching silently. For centuries we have awaited the coming of Takar's successor, Tazan said, one who would unlock the full potential of mind and body. You, Keith, are that successor. You are destined to lead our people into a new era of greatness. Keith stared at him, stunned. I'm just a human. How can I be Takar's successor? Takar's power transcends species, Tazan said, and you have already begun to tap into that power. But your journey is far from over. I can guide you, teach you to master your abilities, but the path will be difficult and dangerous. Keith's mind reeled. A destiny leading the Romulans, it seemed impossible. He opened his mouth to respond, but before he could speak, a chime sounded from Tarok's communicator. Tarok read the message, his face growing grim. It's from the Academy. Zephyr has accused you of treason, Keith. The High Council has issued a warrant for your arrest. Keith's blood ran cold. Zephyr's wounded pride had driven him to this. If Keith returned now, he would surely be imprisoned, his newfound abilities wasted. He looked to Tizan Torn. Return and face judgment or stay and embrace his supposed destiny. The decision weighed heavy upon him. Keith stared intently at Tizan, weighing his words. The temptation to stay and train to unlock the full potential within him burned fiercely. But deep down, he knew he couldn't abandon the Academy or the Romulans who had become his comrades, his friends. Even Zephyr, misguided as he was, didn't deserve the fate that awaited Keith if he fled. I have to go back, Keith said firmly, standing tall. 
I can't run from this. I need to face the council to show them the truth. Tizan's face was unreadable, but he nodded slowly. I understand. Your loyalty is commendable. He reached into his robes, producing a small crystal pendant on a chain. It pulsed with a soft inner light as he placed it in Keith's hand. Take this. It contains a fraction of Takara's power. It will aid you in the trials to come. Keith clasped the pendant, feeling its warmth against his skin. He met Tazan's gaze. Thank you for everything. The journey back to the academy was a blur, Keith's mind racing as he tried to plan his next move. As soon as he set foot on the grounds, a dozen armed guards surrounded him, energy staffs crackling. Keith King, you are under arrest for treason against the Romulan Empire, the lead guard barked. Come quietly or face the consequences. Keith raised his hands, allowing them to snap restraints around his wrists. They marched him into the great hall where the High Council waited, their faces stern. Zephyr stood before them, a triumphant sneer on his face. Behold the human traitor, Zephyr proclaimed, pointing an accusing finger at Keith. He has conspired against us, trained in forbidden arts. He must be punished to the fullest extent of our law. The council members murmured, some nodding in agreement. Keith's heart raced, but he forced himself to remain calm. He reached out with his mind, as Takar's training had taught him, seeking to read the thoughts and intentions of those around him. What he found made his blood run cold. Zephyr's mind was a tangled knot of foreign influence, his thoughts not fully his own. The same insidious presence lurked in the minds of several council members. Someone or something was controlling them. Keith focused his power through the pendant, feeling it grow warm against his chest. With a burst of mental energy, he projected his voice into the minds of all present. Zephyr is not himself, Keith declared, his words echoing in their thoughts. Nor are many of you. An outside force seeks to manipulate you, to turn you against each other. I can show you the truth. Zephyr recoiled as if struck his eyes wide. The councillors shifted uneasily, some clutching their heads. Keith pushed harder, using the pendant's power to burn away the foreign presence. One by one they came back to themselves, blinking in confusion. Zephyr shook his head, his face a mix of horror and realization. What have I done, he whispered. Keith, I... But before he could finish, a shadow detached itself from the far wall. A hooded figure, its form wreathed in dark energy, glided forward. Fools! It hissed, its voice dripping with malice. You have ruined everything. No matter. I will destroy you all myself. The figure raised its hands, unleashing a torrent of psychic energy that swept across the room. Council members cried out, falling to their knees. Keith braced himself, the pendant flaring brightly as it absorbed the brunt of the attack. Zephyr staggered to his feet, drawing his energy blade. We must stop it, together. Keith nodded unclipping his own blade from his belt. Side by side, human and Romulan charged forward, their weapons flashing. The shadowy figure met them with a roar, tendrils of darkness lashing out. They fought fiercely, blades clashing against psychic shields, neither side giving ground. Keith could feel his strength waning, the pendant's power nearing its limit. In a last desperate gambit, Zephyr lunged forward, his blade aimed at the figure's heart. But the shadow was too quick, its counter-strike sending Zephyr flying. The Romulan hit the ground hard, his blade skittering away. Zephyr! Keith cried, trying to reach him. But the figure blocked his path, its laughter cruel. You never should have come back, human, it sneered. Now you will die. The figure raised its hand for a final devastating blow. Keith closed his eyes, bracing for the end. But the blow never came. Keith's eyes snapped open to see Zephyr, his body aglow with an inner fire, standing between him and the shadow. The Romulan had thrown himself in front of Keith, taking the full force of the attack. No! Keith screamed as Zephyr crumpled. Rage and grief surged through him, the pendant blazing like a star. With a wordless cry, he unleashed everything he had, a maelstrom of psychic energy that engulfed the shadow. The figure shrieked, its form dissipating like smoke in the wind. In moments it was gone, leaving only a ringing silence. Keith dropped to his knees beside Zephyr, 
cradling the Romulan's head. Zephyr's eyes fluttered open, a smile ghosting across his lips. "'You did it,' he rasped. "'I was wrong about you, Keith, about everything. You are more than worthy. You are—' His words trailed off, his eyes going distant. Keith bowed his head, tears stinging his eyes. Around him the council members were stirring, the haze of confusion lifting. They looked to Keith, a mix of awe and respect on their faces. "'Keith King,' the head councillor said, her voice ringing with authority. "'You have saved us all. The Romulan Empire owes you a great debt. Name your reward, and it shall be yours.' Keith stood slowly, Zephyr's body still in his arms. He looked around at the faces of the Romulans, seeing them anew, not as adversaries but as potential allies, friends even. But he knew his path lay elsewhere. He had a greater destiny, one that called him back to the stars, back to his own people. "'I am honoured," Keith said, his voice steady. "'But I cannot stay. My place is on earth, sharing what I have learned, what we have learned. The Romulans and humans have much to teach each other.' The counsellor nodded, a smile playing at her lips. Then go with our blessing, Keith King. Know that you will always have a place among us. In the days that followed, as Keith prepared for his journey home, he was hardly surprised when Tarok and a handful of other cadets came to him, their faces set with determination. We're coming with you, Tarok said, clasping Keith's arm. To Earth. We want to see your world, to learn from your people as you have learned from ours. Keith grinned, his heart swelling. I wouldn't have it any other way. And so, with his Romulan friends by his side, Keith boarded a sleek spacecraft, its course set for the distant blue planet he called home. As Romulus Prime dwindled behind them, Keith found his thoughts turning to the future, to the challenges and adventures that lay ahead. He fingered the pendant around his neck, feeling its comforting warmth. He knew his journey was far from over, in many ways it was just beginning, but whatever lay ahead, he would face it head-on, with the strength of his human spirit and the wisdom of the Romulans to guide him. For he was Keith King, the first human to walk the halls of the Romulan Space Academy, the man who had forged an unlikely bond between two. You have reached the end of the story. If you enjoyed this story and want to support us, please leave a like and subscribe to our channel, and for every comment that says 88... I will heart every single one of them. Thank you for your time.